What's up Mopar fam? I hope everybody out there is having a fantastic time. So today we're going to try to get the new gauges installed, the boost gauge, and move my wideband gauge into the new pillar that we bought from Autometer. We're going to try to get this guy installed today and get our gauges mounted in there. And we're going to run the wiring and pretty much get it all set up ready for the supercharger. We'll go ahead and we'll make the lights work on the gauges. The wideband we can definitely go ahead and hook up. And then for the boost gauge, we'll pretty much run everything. The wiring, the, the boost reference hose all the way to the engine bay. And then we'll probably leave it at that until we actually get the supercharger installed. But that's the plan. Try to get this thing knocked out. And as much of this done as we can to get one more thing off the list for the budget boost build. So first thing on the list is we need to mount our gauges inside this new pod. And then we'll go outside. We'll mount this thing to the truck. So let's get to it. Let's get our gauges mounted inside this new pod. So as many of you already know, if you watched some of the previous videos, we ended up going with this Mopar licensed auto meter gauge for our boost gauge. It's officially a licensed product from Opar, and uh, this gauge looks super badass. And then here is our gauge. That thing looks so badass. And this is a vacuum and boost gauge. If you guys are interested in getting this gauge for a build that you're going to do, I will have the link to this gauge in the description of this video. And I did purchase this guy off of Amazon. That is where I found the best price on it. And this is our pillar that we're going to be putting our boost and our wideband gauge in. This is also made by Autometer. And I also got this guy off of Amazon. And the link to this guy will also be in the description of this video. I will tell you now, guys, that there's a lot of boost gauge out, boost gauges out there or options. Some of them is very cheap. And even some of the cheap ones will work pretty good, but usually what happens is the cheaper ones will come with like some rubber line instead of this hard uh, tight PVC slash nylon uh, hose. And the rubber hose tends to, especially if you're making a lot of boost, will tend to kind of expand when the boost builds, which can give you kind of a false or slow reading on your boost gauge. The, the very hard nylon tubing or PVC tubing like this is definitely better as this stuff does not expand when the pressure builds. So it gives a very true and accurate reading. This is a mechanical boost gauge on also. This is not a, a digital or analog gauge or whatever. This is a mechanical boost gauge. And I chose that due to the fact that Usually those are a little more snappy and more accurate. But all in all, you know, they all work. It's just preference and what you want. I tend to like these, and that's just the way I feel about it. So before we put this thing in the pot, I wanted to show you guys. So on the back of this gauge, it is marked. It has a 12 volt plus symbol for this electrical connector right here where you would slide a female spade connector onto it. And then the other one is marked GR or GND for ground. And it's also a male connector where you could plug a female electrical connector onto it. So that would be, that's your only two electrical connections is your, uh, your switch 12 volts and then your ground connection. Um, other than that, the other connection right here, which is this threaded mill nipple would be for the actual boost hose that's how that connects so the first thing we're gonna have to do is put our little nut thread it onto the nylon tubing and then we're gonna put our little flange that little brass piece it's gonna go on next you're gonna slide it over the hose And that should be about it. And then we're gonna slide it into 
the adapter on the back of the gauge and then we're going to slide our little brass nut all the way up and thread it on and then we'll get a wrench for this guy and tighten it up and you don't want to tighten this thing down too crazy and it looks like it's a 10 millimeter so we have the boost hose hooked to the gauge and before we finish it I want to show you guys something real quick so when they ship these gauges you can see it's not set to zero it's actually set on about 5 psi and that is on purpose per the instructions they do that for shipping reasons to keep the gauge accurate and calibrated so on the back of the gauge you're gonna see there's a little red plastic uh, little insert guy right here and what you're gonna do is squeeze this and pull it out and then discard that that is what's holding that needle on about 5 psi so they say before you install the gauge that that needs to be removed obviously because if not the gauge is not going to work so we're going to squeeze that and remove it and it's just a little pin and now our gauge is reading zero like it's supposed to all right so we're going to jam this guy into our pillar and we're just going to feed this nylon tubing or this PVC tubing, whatever you want to call it. Got our hose routed through the back. Now we are going to start pressing this gauge down in here through the pod. And what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm actually not going to use the mounting bracket that the gauge comes with which what this would do would be it would sandwich the gauge and the bracket between whatever it is you're mounting the gauge in so that the gauge obviously can't fall out or slip around or move or anything like that but this gauge is very very difficult to shove into this pod it is a super super tight fit and this thing, this gauge is not going to fall out whatsoever. Um, and honestly, if we mount that bracket on there, you know, when we mount this on the truck, I'm sure we're going to have to clock or rotate the gauge to the exact location that we want. So if we go ahead and we mount it and bolt it down, we're not going to be able to do that. So I'm going to just shove it in the pod because, it, like I said, it is, I don't even have it all the way down there. And it's not, I mean, it is tight. It is not going to move anywhere. So that way we can clock it exactly where we want. So the next step is going to be putting the wideband gauge in. I'm going to grab it real quick so we can press it through the pod. All right, so here is our wideband gauge right here. This is a gauge that I found on eBay years ago. And it has done me wonders. It works great. It comes with everything, O2 sensor, the whole nine, for like a hundred bucks. It's been a super awesome, really good, reliable gauge. And just show you a close up of the boost gauge here. So that's our boost gauge mounted in the pod. Definitely gonna be super badass. We're gonna get this gauge pressed into our pod here. And this gauge is super simple. It has one connector on the back for everything. So it just has one connection, you plug it in, and everything on the other end of that harness is what you wire in. It's got a positive and a ground, that's it. And then the other wiring runs to the O2 sensor. So super simple, one connection. All right, we have our wideband gauge pressed in. So we are pretty much ready now to go to the truck and get this thing installed and get the wiring ran to the boost gauge and then get the connector plugged into the wideband gauge. I've already had the wideband gauge hooked up obviously because it's been on the truck for over a year. But we do have to run some connections for power for our boost gauge. 
So let's uh, get this thing out there and get it going. We're gonna get started on removing this driver's side pillar so that we can put the aftermarket one in for our gauge pod and our extra gauges for the boost gauge and then my wideband gauge. I already have the wideband gauge mounted down here in my uh, console right here in the front and we're actually gonna move it up here to our new pillar that we're about to install. So to get this off, there's a couple of little caps you'll see right here, one here and then one right here at the bottom. You're gonna need a little flathead screwdriver to pop those caps off and then behind each one is a 10 millimeter screw. That's it, two little 10 millimeter uh, screws. And then I'm gonna un, I'm gonna move my Diablo Sport Tuner for a second. I'm just gonna unstick it from the windshield here to give us a little bit more room. And this thing should pull off now. There it is. That wasn't too hard at all right there, guys. Pretty simple. Set it up there for a second. And now it's time to go get the new one. We kind of skipped ahead a little bit. Here's our gauge pod. As you can see, it kind of looks like a spaghetti factory right now. I have the power wires ran to the gauge got our 12 volts and our ground hooked to the boost gauge and it's literally just the whole roll of wire is just dangling because obviously I don't know how long we're gonna need as far as wiring goes so we hooked it to one end we have our boost pressure hose laying here and that way we can get this thing up there and mounted and then plug in the wideband gauge and then we can mount this panel back on and it'll be 100% done and all we got to do is come down here and actually wire up the connections to the boost gauge. And then later down the road, we'll hook the boost hose to manifold pressure so we can get our reading for the boost gauge. But for right now, let's get this thing in place. And the sun is literally blasting right in my eye sockets right over here. <laughs> so this is interesting. We're almost there, we just kind of got to slide the pod down towards the dash a little bit to get it to pop in. There we go. Now our mounting hole should be lined up. And it is. All right, she's pretty much on there, guys. Now we just got to get the screw in. So, as you seen when we took the old one out, it actually had two factory 10 millimeter screws that held it on. So the new auto meter pod only has one mounting location it clips in at the bottom and then they give you they supply you with one screw it's a phillips head screw to go into the top factory location and that is the only piece of hardware that holds this new panel on guys the pod is on and now we're gonna work on the wiring and routing the pressure hose so what we're doing is we're coming down the side of the dash here 
we have these side panels off all the way down and so these two wires I have hooked hooked to the boost gauge red is our power ground the black is our ground obviously and I found this factory ground location right here behind this protective co cover I'm gonna loosen this and we're gonna we're gonna run our ground wire to that location we're just gonna put a little circle eyelet on it and bolt it to that factory spot and then for our power wire we are going to run I have a this blue wire right here actually runs to a fuse already and it's for my amplifier for my stereo system so we're going to tap into that blue wire because that is a switched 12 volts set up already and uh, we can pick up our 12 volt signal right there so super easy for this install so far not too bad but uh yeah we're gonna get to it We're going to make up our ground wires real quick, get this factory ground bolt out from that location right there on the frame, on the body. So what we're going to do is we're going to run our little ground strap to it and crimp that guy down. And you usually squeeze those things with crimping pliers to approximately one to two motherfuckers is the right torque for that. And we're going to slide our bolt through here, through our new ground eyelet, and then run it back to the factory spot here. go and now we can use this little pigtail we made for a little ground strap to hook to our grounds on our new wiring so this is the wiring for my wideband gauge and that's our hot and that one is our ground so we're gonna have to hook our ground to our new ground strap and then we also have to hook our ground for our boost gauge to the same spot that way all of our grounds is mounted to this location right here so it looks like that should be coming down from our boost gauge this one we'll cut it down we should be more than good about right there roughly so we'll cut that wire off and then we can get rid of that mess of wire splice it give it a little twisty twist and then we're going to go ahead and splice our ground strap we just made give it a twisty twist now I gotta snip off my old ground connector for my wideband and uh, just get it down to bare wire so we can hook all of our grounds together with just one butt connector and we're gonna crimp this down to approximately one big motherfucker yeah. now last connection is from the boost gauge ground to the other end of that butt connector all right let's butt connector this last side and again we're going to squeeze that down to the torque of about one motherfucker
And the last thing we're gonna need to do as far as wiring goes is hook this red wire from the wide band up, the red wire from the boost gauge, and then we're gonna wire it down to that blue wire that goes to my stereo system for the remote turn on. And that's gonna be how we get our power to our gauges. So we can get rid of that big mess. All the wiring completely done and hooked up. Got everything tucked up. We just gotta put the panels back on. All that stuff. And I wanted to show you, if you can see up there, we have the boost pressure hose right there. And we have it running through that factory big grommet in the floorboard where I have a mess of other things running through like my power cable for the amp and my throttle position switch for my nitro system also runs through that grommet take you guys over here and show you and here's the all the extra hose for that boost pressure line and what we're gonna do is for a time being we're just going to zip tie it up right here all the extra slack until we get this thing completely done and then we'll hook it up to uh, the manifold so that we can re vacuum and boost but for now everything's hooked up We're going to start this thing up. Got power, both gauges. Wide bands on. Got plenty of gauges now, boys. So I did have my wideband initially in the console right here in this little pocket. That's where it used to be. But it just makes more sense to be up here with everything else, that's for sure. Yes, so power on truck off key still on we still got power turn the key off well we're still in the truck once we get out and open the door it should go off let's see oh yeah we're good baby all right guys we got the new gauge pod installed the boost gauge and we moved the wide band to the new gauge pod everything's hooked up it's working good as you've seen we got lights we got power now we just need some boost so as always stay safe out there don't forget to hit that subscribe button tap that bell button for the notifications so you don't miss any future videos and we'll see you guys on the next one